In case you missed it, breaking this morning, former Vice President Mike Pence formally announced his bid for the White House. At 5.30 Eastern this morning, Mr. Pence posted this video to Twitter, confirming his intent to run. Mr. Pence will be in Des Moines, Iowa today. He says he considers himself, quote, a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order. He plans to focus extensively on appealing to the evangelical voters. Or early polling suggests an uphill battle for the former vice president as more contenders compete for the nomination. So what immediate effect will Pence's announcement have on the race. To help me answer that question and others, I'm joined by Alexander Bolton, senior staff writer at The Hill. Alexander, you and I have discussed this before, but now that it's official, what do you think with this announcement this morning by Vice President Pence? Well, I think it's interesting on you know several levels that you have the former vice president challenging uh, Trump in the race, who was his president. Usually vice presidents show uh, more loyalty to that uh, than that. And so it also shows that there has been a rift between uh, Pence and Trump. And that is a problem uh, for Pence because uh, his approval rating in Iowa was around 86 uh, percent among Republican voters and it dropped down to 66 percent, according to uh, Des Moines Register polling. Um, and it also shows that even with evangelicals, his core uh, support group, he's not all that popular. Uh, he's uh, at 58 percent, which is kind of a disappointing number for him. So uh, he has a lot of work to do. And uh, his kind of his core constituency in Iowa isn't that thrilled with him. And I think that's partly because um, he split with Trump so publicly about uh, the, the January 6th events. And so um, it turns out that's hurting him with the voters he needs. Alexander, sticking with Mr. Pence, though, Mr. Pence is definitely no, no one has questioned his faith um, and, and, and his piety. But my question to you with Mr. Pence, he also has a record that he can stand on as a loyal lieutenant of the former president. But until, like you said, January 6th, that's when things seem to make a rift. How does he talk about all the accomplishments he had in a successful four-year term um, and still separate himself and say that he's a viable candidate to take on his former boss? You know, that's a great question, and it's one that Pence has to answer, and I don't think he's provided a compelling answer yet. I think what's interesting, when you look at his video uh, this morning, which he launched at 5.30 a.m., he almost tries to sound, he almost tries to adopt a Reagan-esque posture. I mean, even the sound of his voice seems to mimic uh, Reagan's voice, and that he, he, he goes back to traditional conservatism he talks about uh, the, the need for a strong national secure uh, strong national security he talks about the importance of bringing back prosperity he skips uh, a lot of the uh, cultural uh, culture war uh, hot button hot button topics um, he seems to be trying to go back to an earlier form of republicanism as though trump didn't even happen and um, we'll see if that works but i think and, and, and the Republicans I talk to say that the GOP is tr fundamentally transformed. So I think it will be tough for Pence to turn back the clock. And that was my question, Alex, for you. Has, does that earlier form of the GOP still exist? Well, we'll find out. Um, I, I, I don't think so. And the polls show it really doesn't. Uh, President Trump continues to dominate in the polls. And the, the person who's number two in the polls, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has embraced the type of uh, MAGA-style politics that Trump made famous in, in 2016. So uh, Ron DeSantis is running almost as a clone of Trump, uh, kind of policy-wise and as a cultural warrior, although he says you know, he's a more uh, competent version of Trump. He's Trump without the baggage. Um, so is there room for someone like Mike Pence as a Reagan-esque uh, figure to swoop in and, and win the nomination? Put it this way, no one's giving him very good odds of winning this thing. Is there room for someone like Chris Christie, who also recently announced that he's in the race officially, and everyone's saying, you know, Mr. Christie, uh, once a member of the Trump team and a former prosecutor, is probably the only candidate in the race who can really bring it to Mr. Trump. What are you thinking about Mr. Christie and his chances? Well, uh, Christie is doing the one thing that other Republican presidential candidates aren't, and that is taking on Trump directly, uh, attacking him personally, attacking his character, uh, accusing him uh, and his family of grift in the White House. I mean, some really harsh attacks. Um, he's been called a paid assassin in the media. 
Of course, that's hyperbole. Um, but but the result is uh, he's very unpopular with Republican voters. He has some of the, uh, I think he has the highest uh, unfavorable rating among Republican voters, according to the polling that I've looked at. And so uh, it shows that if you attack Trump, you wind up um, alienating a bunch of Republican voters. And I Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation in your cable lineup. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-based, unbiased coverage.